is that banding will ruin the quality of your 3D prints and it can be hard to eliminate. So today we feature two community designs you may wish to consider to combat this frustrating problem. Z-banding, also known as Z-wobble, is rarely seen in modern 3D printers, but if you do have it, you'll know about it and you will hate it. It can be very hard to find out the exact problem and therefore to fix it. In this video, we're going to test two designs by my patrons that might be able to reduce the problem on your 3D printer. We start, as always, by asking what is Z-banding? And the most classic example I could find was this thread by AppJaws1 in the RepRap forum. As you can see from the pictures, vertically along the z-axis, we have a series of horizontal bands, where the width of the layers appears to swell and contract at regular intervals. Z-banding is instantly recognisable, but it can be extremely hard to diagnose the exact problem. For instance, the example in this great video by Stefan from CNC Kitchen, where he demonstrates the effect that an unstable bed temperature can have with a thermal expansion and contraction can make the surface of the bed move during the print and cause Z-banding. Most of the time, however, Z-banding is caused by mechanical misalignment or faulty parts such as a bent lead screw, and the solutions we're going to explore are targeted at those problems. On to my target printers for this test, and the first one is my Ender 3. And when I was installing a second Z-lead screw and stepper motor, I experienced Z-banding if everything wasn't aligned perfectly. With some fine tuning, I was able to eliminate the problem, but recently in a video where I was setting up input shaping for Marlin, I thought the layer stacking could be a little better. Not necessarily anything wrong with the Z-axis, but worth experimenting with. The other target printer is my CR10 Max, a go-to workhorse for large objects because it's fitted with a large nozzle. I have noticed that on some recent prints, there is some subtle Z-banding at regular intervals on the vertical walls. I say subtle because although it's obvious in this footage, it only occasionally shows up and when it does, it's only cosmetic rather than being prominent enough to feel anything but a flat vertical surface. So my CR10 Max is an obvious choice for these fixes. To evaluate properly, I need a test print for before and after which I've created and uploaded to printables. The design is pretty simple and should be printed with zero infill, no top surfaces and the Z seam at the back. The aim was to have tall geometry that was still quick to print and used minimal filament. My Ender 3 test print shows the inconsistent layer stacking that I'm talking about, which is shown really obviously when you put a light directly from above. None of these bands are repeating however. The CR10 Max print with its 0.4mm layer height looks beautiful until you once again put the light directly from above. And that just shows an extremely subtle repeating pattern on the vertical wall. With our baselines in place, let's examine our two potential solutions. The first is from my patron Derek and is a Z-axis motor mount with an integrated axial thrust bearing. And as you can see from the pictures, Derek has tested extensively with different designs and the difference between the worst and the best is profound. Per stepper motor, you'll only need one printed part, but you'll also need one of these axial thrust bearings per stepper as well. Being in Australia, I clicked through and followed the link to get the exact ones but the specs are here in case you're shopping from elsewhere. And to make life easy, I've got an Amazon link in the description. When printing this, you need something more thermally resistant than PLA, such as PETG. And there is a lip on the underside that will require support from the build platform only. And once printed, the only post-processing required is removing that support material. Now let's have a look at the axial thrust bearings. As you can see, they come in three parts, an upper half, a lower half, and a race in the middle with the ball bearings in place. They allow rotation, but they're particularly good at supporting weight from top to bottom. Compare this to a traditional ball bearing, which again allows rotation, but instead supports load, heading towards the center ball from the outside. This stepper motor has seen its best days and has a really large amount of axial play. And this is one specific situation that this modification can address. But even on a stepper motor that feels solid, if there's enough vertical load on the shaft, you can have some flex and this may introduce Z banding. So this modification is good in those cases too. I'm going to install this off the machine for clarity and our first step is to place the mount over the top of the stepper motor and then secure it with M3 bolts. I found that M3x20 for the back 
An M3 by 10 for the front was pretty much ideal, but this could vary from stepper motor to stepper motor, depending on the depth of the threads. Once the mount is secure, we can drop the thrust bearing down from the top, making sure that it's centered. Before going any further, you'll need to install some M5 bolts and T-nuts, ready for the mount to bolt onto the extrusion. This is designed to work solely with a rigid coupler between the output shaft of the stepper and the lead screw, because a flexible coupler can allow vertical movement. The coupler is inserted from above, resting on top of the axial thrust bearing. If you've got a bad stepper with a lot of play like this one, you want to push the shaft upwards before tightening the coupler, as this will remove any vertical play. The mount will bolt onto 2020 extrusion, and then the Z lead screw will lower from above, and you can either insert a ball bearing between the lead screw and the output shaft to make sure they don't rub unevenly, or do what I did and leave a small gap. Once everything is torqued up, the mod is fully installed, and there should be no vertical movement at all on the lead screw. The second is from my patron Patrick, and takes almost the opposite approach, allowing the Z step to float in the X and Y directions inside this printed cage. To build the cage, there are multiple files that need printing, and the most unusual hardware required are 48 3mm ball bearings. Again, to make life easy, I have a link to a set from Amazon posted in the description. Because the stepper motor sits inside a cage, this will only be compatible with steppers that are around 32mm high, which is very common. There's multiple parts to print for this one, and this is what you'll need if you're doing it for two Z steppers. There's two of all of these parts, apart from bottom block B, which has a left and right version. Like before, PLA might get too soft against a hot stepper, so PETG, or something else that can handle the temperature. And here is a set of parts printed for a left and right Z stepper setup. Everything is a duplicate, apart from bottom block B. The assembly here is a little more involved, but we do have step-by-step -step illustrated instructions to assist us. The first thing we need to do is to drill out eight holes with a three millimeter drill bit. That includes the two holes in top bearing B, the two holes in bottom block A, the two round holes for the connector piece, and the two holes on the short side of top bearing A. These are the holes with the nut traps behind them. With this out of the way, we need to join top bearing A and B pieces, as they'll be permanently joined together. We need an M3 thread in the remaining two holes of top bearing A, and if you have an M3 tap, you can add them this way. If you don't, you can drill out the holes with a 2.5mm drill bit, and then carefully cut the threads with an M3 bolt. Once the threads are ready, we can apply a small amount of glue between the two holes, place the B piece on top, and quickly insert two M3 by 12 bolts. Once they're completely torqued up, the tips of the two bolts should be flush on the underside. Each set has four nut traps, where an M3 hex nut needs to be inserted and it's easiest to insert them by pulling them through with another M3 bolt. Here they are in place for the top piece, with another pair inserted in the bottom block. Time to insert some ball bearings, and I highly recommend tweezers for this job. You'll notice that there's 12 slots per set of parts, and each of those slots will take 4 ball bearings. Amazingly, I didn't drop any on the floor and lose them, which I thought would be a certainty. For the top piece, there's a little lip, so after dropping them on top, Use your finger to push them into place. That's 48 ball bearings per side and we're ready to go. The bottom is mounted on our extrusion first and if you push hard enough it will clip into place. Some printer designs will also let you slide it down the top of the extrusion. Bottom block B must be matched to the left or right side and the arrow should face the extrusion. It rests from above and should be able to slide from left to right. The top piece is designed to trap the bearings so they don't fall out when inverted. But if that's not true for you, you can always put the stepper motor upside down, trapping the bearings in place as you put it back the right way. The stepper motor then slides down from above, taking care to line up the plug with the cutout in the bottom piece. At this point, the assembly should look something like this. The connector goes on to join the top and bottom using M3 by 6 bolts, not too tight at this stage. M4 bolts and T-nuts can be used to secure the top part to the extrusion, and after this, you can test that the stepper motor is free to move in X and Y, but can't move vertically up and down. Like our first design, a rigid coupler is used to join the output shaft of the stepper motor to the Z-axis lead screw, and again, I'd recommend a slight gap between the two. You can test to make sure that everything rotates freely, you have no vertical play, but the stepper motor can move in the X and Y directions. And that is how we assemble each of these designs, 
trying to achieve the same purpose, yet with different means. Derek's design, ideal for removing vertical play and supporting really heavy components above. And Patrick's design, ideal for allowing X and Y play to correct for bent rods and misalignment. Clearly, these were just demonstration installs and the next step is to install them on the machines properly and do some follow-up print tests. When you install a Z-axis stepper onto your machine for real, it's important to loosen the mounting bolts, move the Z-axis up and down, and then bring the nozzle down to the home position. This should get everything aligned as much as possible and you can then tighten the mounting bolts. You'll also need to get the X-axis gantry square. And on the Ender 3, I'm running independent dual Z steppers, which means I can use G34 for this to happen automatically with tremendous accuracy. Whereas my CR10 Max still has synchronized Z steppers, which means I needed to use some timber blocks to square everything up manually. With each target printer receiving one of these mods, it was time for some test prints. And as you might expect, I run the exact same G code for each machine as the baseline test print. And after that, I switched the two mods between the two machines and ran the exact same G code for a third time. Here we have the results for the Ender 3. And to be honest, I can't really see any improvement here. That leads me to believe that the inconsistencies I'm seeing are probably coming from the higher speeds I was using with input shaping rather than anything wrong with the Z axis and I'll have to troubleshoot elsewhere. And now the results for the CR10 Max, which look glorious until we put the light from above. In which case we see once again, the results are pretty much identical. I can see that these mods are working as intended, so that just means that the problems that they're designed to fix aren't present on my two test printers. Both Derek and Patrick have got great results on their own printers thanks to their developed designs. Although they weren't suitable for what my printer required, it doesn't mean that they won't be for yours. So we should appreciate the fact they've put in the time and effort to release these mods for free so they can help others. Sometimes that's just the way it goes. I do agree with the theory for both mods, so please consider them if you're suffering from Z wobble. Frustratingly, the printer that needed this the most is my neglected Ender 5, but it uses a completely different and incompatible stepper mounting for the Z axis. With that in mind, I'm asking you to share your favorite Z banding fix. Let me know what it is in the comment section. Thank you to those in the community trying to help others for free. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.